I'm sure many of you have heard the saying, girls can do anything. But I'm here to tell you that that's not true. Women are faced with gender inequality in the STEM fields more than any other career in the world. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. Let me tell you a story. There was a girl who went to create her schedule for her junior year of high school. When she was asked what science class she wanted to take, she told them AP Physics or Advanced Placement Physics. And the male teacher who helped her create her schedule asked her if she was capable of taking the class. Now keep in mind, her grades in her other science classes were amazing, and she wasn't failing her math class. When she told them that, he, that she was capable, he said, we just typically don't have a lot of girls in the class, and I want you to feel comfortable. Now, she thanks him for the warning that she might not feel comfortable, but that was the last thing she was worried about. Let me give you some numbers. 18% of college engineering majors are female, while over 60% of teenage girls report being interested in science. 48% of the United States STEM workforce is female. When people hear about gender bias or gender-based discrimination or gender stereotyping, STEM education typically doesn't come to the minds of many. STEM education is so important and so needed in this time, but it continues to be a male-dominated field. Over the course of my talk today, I hope to give you a look at the history of women in STEM, what we're doing now, and what we have to do in the future. Barack Obama once said, one of the things that I really strongly believe in is that we need to have more girls interested in math, science, and engineering. We've got half the population that is way, up, way underrepresented in those fields, and that means we've got a whole bunch of talent not being encouraged the way they need to. On the first International Women's Day in 1911, we saw over 15,000 women march the streets of New York City demanding equal pay and gender equality. While we've gotten better pay, we still haven't gotten equal pay or achieved total gender equality. We still have to take action, and there are a few fields that need urgent action, such as the STEM career. Women are thriving in industries such as law, politics, and communication. However, women still only account for less than a quarter of the workforce in mathematical fields. In order to achieve the gender equality in STEM fields, the United Nations declared February 11th as the International Day of Women and Girls in Science, with aiming to achieve full and equal access and participation to science and math. The causes of gender equality in STEM education still remain unknown. The idea that women cannot perform jobs in STEM fields, but some still blame misogyny. The real problem is that women just don't partake in STEM activities for the fear of being judged or not listened to. When college professors were asked why there was a relative scarcity of female professors in math, science, and engineering, 74.5% said it was because of a lack of interest, while 24.5% blamed discrimination. Another problem women in the STEM careers face are stereotypes and mindsets. For example, a female student taking a math test might experience extra cognitive and emotional burden of worry related to the stereotype that women are bad at math. Many people claim they do not believe the stereotype that girls and women are not as good as boys in, and men in math and science. However, even individuals who consciously refute gender and, and, and science stereotypes can still hold that belief at an unconscious level. These unconscious beliefs or implicit biases may be more powerful than explicitly held beliefs and values simply because we are just not aware of them. Women and girls with fixed mindsets might believe that intelligence is static. In contrast, individuals with a growth mindset believe that intelligence can be developed. Because of this, they want to learn more and therefore to embrace challenges, persist when they encounter obstacles, see effort as a path to mastery, learn from criticism, and be inspired from the success of others. Individuals with a fixed mindset are more susceptible to a loss of confidence when they encounter challenges. Because they, if they believe that they are truly smart, things will come to them. Individuals with growth mindsets, on the other hand, show a far greater belief in the power of effort, and in the face of difficulty, their confidence actually grows because they believe that they are learning and getting smarter as a result of challenging themselves. These research findings are important for women in STEM because encountering obstacles and challenging problems is in the nature of scientific work. When girls and women believe they have a fixed amount of intelligence, they're more likely to lose confidence and disengage from science and engineering, 
when they inevitably encounter difficulties in their work. A growth mindset benefits these young women trying to pursue a STEM career. Therefore, we have to continue to encourage a growth mindset. You may be asking, what are we doing to combat the issue of gender inequality in STEM fields? Well, we're trying to do many things. We're trying to dismantle the stereotypes that women and girls face. We're trying to encourage girls and women to pursue STEM careers by implementing programs like Girls Who Code into schools. Right now in STEM careers, we're facing the biggest gender gap we ever have, and we're continuously searching for the reason why. Now, what can we do in the future in order to solve the gender gap in the STEM fields? We have to get women and girls interested in science and spread the word about achievements of women and girls in science. We have to teach students about the stereotypes and encourage them to get a growth mindset. We have to promote gifted and talented programs that help gifted, gifted students access STEM programs. And we have to help students develop their spatial skills as well as help them realize that they have the potential to join a STEM field. We also have to encourage girls to take calculus, physics, chemistry, and engineering classes when they're available. So, in the end, why should we all be STEMinists? STEM is without a doubt one of the most important career fields. Without STEM, you wouldn't have the clothes you wear, the car you drive, or the cell phone you can never put down. We have to start encouraging young women and girls to join STEM careers so that no woman, like the woman I mentioned, is discouraged from joining a career in STEM. I can promise you that I will be a part of the generation of strong young women to change the STEM workforce, but we can't do it alone. In order to help eliminate the gender gap in STEM, we all have to act. Thank you.